to be constructed in such a way that you can grow there by the word of God. Therefore, you need to essentially eat the word of God on a consistent basis. So every chance we get to come together in the house of the Lord, that is a perfect opportunity where your faith can really grow. So that's why I can say faith is a currency that assesses everything heaven has to offer. Luke 17, go there with me real briefly. Luke 17, that says this. As the individual, 10 and up 10 men with leprosy stood at a distance and met him. And they raised up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorified God with a loud voice and fell on his face and at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. And we know Samaritan was mixed. It was mixed Jew and Gentile. It was mixed people. And but he responded and but he responded and said, Where are the ten? Were not ten cleansed? But not. Where are they? Was no one found and returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. Have mercy on us. That was a common plea for those that were desiring healing, those that were desiring to be made whole, those that were desiring something from God or, or, or something to uh, bring forth some form of transformation in their life. So when they said, Lord, have mercy on us. And we see certain passages of scripture where people really implore Jesus. We see another passage of scripture in 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 12, uh, right around verse 9, uh, 8 through 9 and 10, where it talks about Paul, where he said, I besought the Lord three times that this thorn will be removed from the flesh. But he said, and, and, but God has given me the grace. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. So there comes a time when we do plead to the Lord. Then there comes another time where all people are just asking for God just to show some act of mercy. And here these leprous men, the Bible said, and they stood from a fall. So they, they, they projected their voices, they shouted, and they said, Lord, have mercy on me. Jesus was so locked in and familiar with the Leviticus law and at the point in chapter 13 that he knew, in other words, to be clad, to be declared cleansed or clean or made whole or readmitted back into society. Therefore, you would have to get the authentication from the priest. So Jesus was so familiar with that, but at the same time, the Bible said, as they went, in other words, their obedience, their faith in the word that was spoken on behalf of the healing, therefore, as they went, they was made whole. Amen. Amen. So in other words, when we act on the word of God, when, when the command is given and when the instruction has been given to you, Therefore, you can see the outcome. Therefore, you can see the blessing behind it. Therefore, you can see the transformation takes place not on what you say, but on your obedience. Yes. Yes. On your obedience. It is your obedience after the fact that you believe. It's not just enough just to mere believe. Even James said in chapter 2, in, in, in James, right in verses 18 and 19, he said, and the devils believe and yet tremble. So it's just not enough just to believe in God. It's not just enough to profess who he is, but you have to make sure that your lifestyle, your life, your walk is lined up what you say. But hear these men in a situation, a leprous situation, and they know something about Jesus. They know enough to know that he has the ability, he has the power, within himself to even just speak the word. And he just said, go, show yourselves to the priest. And sometimes God dispenses us and tells us to go into another direction or he reroutes you and tells you to do this, thus, and so. And by your act of obedience, bring about the change, bring about the transformation, bring about the miracle is not for you to figure out Sometimes you just got to stand and act and move and watch God work out whatever you are petitioning him for. Amen. Yeah. And we saw it with the lepers. 
And the Bible said as they went, they were suddenly. See, this wasn't something that just, just happened. The Bible said as they went, they were suddenly made whole instantaneously. It wasn't something that Jesus had to continue to speak over and say on behalf of. It was immediately done and it happened right there on the spot. When we don't live what we hear, listen to this. When we don't live what we hear, there will be a space of unbelief that separates us from faith that receives the reward of faith. When we don't live what we hear. Oh, I like James. James says faith comes by hearing. And it, it, it talks about being a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Because when we're just hearers and not doers, the Bible says we're deluding or we're deceiving ourselves. We're duping ourselves. That's why we can't just, you know, just hear the word of God, but immediately those that are sincere, those that are saved, those that are transformed, not only do they just hear, but they immediately act upon that which they hear. But those that don't act upon what they hear, they'll forget for hearers, as James was saying, as a man beholding himself in the mirror. He using a metaphorical term that you can relate to. As one looking in the mirror and then forget what they look like. And how many of us, we know we don't look in the mirror at least once or twice or three times before we left home. Because we want to make sure it wasn't no, 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 I call it a free air hanging out of your nose and, and, and make sure you ain't had nothing hanging out of your eyes. Why? Because you wanted to make sure that you look a certain way. And it's just like looking into the intimate, perfect law of the law. Perfect in that particular text is not talking about perfection in that sense. It's talking about spiritual maturity. So we come to a place as we look into the perfect law, a limited law. It's not talking about a law from a Levitical standpoint or a law from what they upheld from the Mosaic standpoint, but it's talking about the law, the instruction, the word of God. The more we look Look into the word of God, therefore it brings liberty, therefore it brings freedom, therefore it brings about transformation, but it all hangs on the hinges of your faith. Yes. Mark 6, chapter 4 through 6. Jesus said to them, a prophet is without dishonor except in his own hometown and among his own relatives and his own household. And he could not do any miracles except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he was amazed at their own belief. A prophet is without honor. He said this in accord with one of his robes. But the Bible said that he could not do except a few miracles. It wasn't a diminishment in, in Jesus' power. It was their unbelief. Their unbelief was so strong to the point that whatever they could have received from the Lord, they couldn't receive it because of unbelief. Don't allow enemy, don't allow the enemy of doubt and unbelief to rob your faith. And sometimes we get discouraged at a, at a, at a particular place. I like Luke chapter 18. Remember the, the woman that's, that's standing before the unjust judge? And the unjust judge said it says that he did not regard man nor God. But yet it's still this woman kept petitioning this judge for an act of kindness, for justice on her behalf. And the Bible said that she was a widow woman. And a lot of times widows, and they only had what was left to them. And a lot of times their life would be hard, especially if they, they had their husband or their spouse would die at the time. And, and if the affairs were in place in the proper order, then the widow woman would really be almost in a destitute situation. But this widow woman, and Jesus will teach us something in this particular parable about this widow woman and this unjust judge. And the Bible says that she petitioned him. And then the unjust judge said, because this woman wearied me, that he's going to give her the justice on behalf. It wasn't the fact that he was a God-fearing man. It wasn't the fact that he just wanted to uphold the law. It was the fact that she, he, that she would not wear him out. The Bible said pestering him. And God used, at the end of that text, he said, if the Christians, if the saints of God, if my people, if my disciples would do the same thing, would not your heavenly Father answer them that call upon the name of the Lord consistently? And sometimes when we pray for situations and we get weary, 
we get discouraged sometimes. We've been praying and praying and seeking the Lord about something, a healing, a deliverance, a transformation in some area. And we said, well, Lord, you, you, you haven't done it. I haven't got the raise. I haven't got the permission to the position. I haven't got the promotion. My body is still right with pain. I've been praying. My, my, my uh, spinal cord is still out of place. I'm still dealing with these migraine headaches. I'm still dealing with this, this uh, blood pressure issue, the sugar issue, this all sorts of issues. Lord, Lord why do you have it? arrest the problem? Why do you have it brought, brought deliverance? And, and, and a lot of times, it's not just not you not believing. It's not just doubt. It's just that God has given you the grace to live through. See, we don't, we don't want to deal with that part of grace. We want, all the thing we want to deal with is when he do the miracle or when he make the way. But when he, when he don't fix it, but give you the grace to stand through it. When he don't heal it, but give you the power to continue to live when other people have died from what you are dealing with. I like it. 2 Corinthians 13, 5, it says this. He was telling the president, he wrote two letters to address many things that was going on in this Corinthian uh, congregation. By like 13, 5, he said, examine yourselves to see whether you be in the faith. Test yourself. Test means the word to me to prove or the proof. Test yourselves. Examine yourself. Why? Because men of them were still kind of wavering in their walk. So he got to a place where he told them, and sometimes we have to examine ourselves to see whether we are in the faith, whether we really believe or not. See, this can't be a half-hearted thing. This has to be a whole-hearted thing. So therefore, when we believe, you know what you believe when it's time to act. Our faith is the deciding factor. When it comes to getting our prayers answered. Matthew 15, love the story, 22 through 28, says this. And a Canaanite woman from the region came out, began to cry, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. Son of David, that is a messianic title. My daughter is severely demon-possessed, or possessed with a devil, some text. But he did not answer her a word, with even a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, send her away, because she shouted 